Should the Oklahoma City Thunder be striving for the third seed in the rough and tough Western Conference? We'll break it all down on today's show. You are Locked On Thunder, your daily Oklahoma City Thunder podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Get it going on the Lockdown Thunder Podcast on the Lockdown Podcast Network, your teams every day. I am your host, media member, and lead beat writer for InsideTheThunder.com, Rylan Styles. Follow me on Twitter at Rylan underscore Styles. Follow the show on Twitter at LO Thunderpod. Email the show, LO Thunderpod at gmail.com. On today's show, we're diving into the Oklahoma City Thunder standings. What's going on in the Western Conference that's played out? exactly how we thought it would just maybe the teams are in the wrong order plus answering your mail bag questions so as of right now the minnesota timberwolves are the top seed in the west the denver nuggets sit at number two a half game behind them and the oklahoma city thunder are a game back of first place in the third seed and when you look up and down the western conference table Everyone's pretty well jumbled up. Like you are going to see that seeds six through nine are separated by a game and a half. You know, the the Suns are only a game behind the Mavericks from six to five. And the Mavericks are only two games behind the Clippers for the four seed. All three of those teams have been incredibly streaky with about six or five games to go, depending on their schedule. But for the Thunder, you know, they're in the midst of this two-game losing streak. They've not seen a three-game losing streak yet, uh, one of only a few teams to have that happen for them this season. And they're staring down this Indiana team who's been really good against uh, above 500 teams, not so great against below 500 teams this year, who just came off a, a terrible loss to Brooklyn as they're trying to fight uh, for their play-in, playoff lives in the Eastern Conference. The Thunder in this game will not have SGA, according to this initial injury report. He's out for this game. Jalen Williams is doubtful for this Pacers game. That means, according to the NBA policy, he has about a 25% chance to play in this game. I will say that Shea was also doubtful uh, for the the New York game, ends up playing and hitting the game winner. So it's not as though j cannot play, but of course, it is doubtful. And so as the Thunder, you know, try to avoid their first three-game losing streak of the season, if the, if the season ended today, which it doesn't, the Thunder would be the third seed taking on the Suns in the sixth seed spot. And so how exactly should this season go and how exactly uh, will this play out? What should the Thunder be rooting for? We're going to work through all of that. But this is what you sign up for in the Western Conference. Like You can go back and listen to every single September podcast that we did every day talking about how the margin of error in the West would be decided by just a few games. Now, the Thunder have been so good that you know, they're, no, they're not in any real detriment, truly, of losing out in a top three seed. You know, mathematically, uh, it can still happen. It's extremely improbable as the Thunder sit four games up on the Clippers at uh, four with three games to with six games to play. So it does not seem likely the Thunder will, will have that uh, anything lower than three. And so when you look at seeds one, two, and three for Oklahoma City, you can make an argument that the three seed is actually a, a place you want to be. Now, of course, every competitor, every season – is defined by the top number one overall seed. And it would be great for the ethos of this team who's been through so much, who's continued to develop at this astronomical pace. And you see that a team that two years ago was described as the black guy of the league transforms into a top seed in the West. That'd be awesome uh, from an emotional standpoint. From a basketball standpoint, 
history is on your side as a one seed. You typically go far, spoiler alert, as the top seed in the West. But you also grant yourself home court advantage in the playoffs for the Western Conference. You, you grant yourself uh, the ability to not face either uh, Denver or Minnesota until the Western Conference Finals and only have to go through one of them, which is a huge, huge bonus. There are some slight downsides and very, very slight downsides, but there are some slight downsides to the one one seed. Number one, something I think that is not uh, discussed a ton is the fact that you do not know for a fact who your first round opponent will be until uh, a day before your series starts. Like the game Friday, April 19th will decide uh, who gets that final spot in the postseason. Uh, the series would start on Sunday for the one seed because uh, you're not going to have the planned teams play a back-to-back. So you'd only have one day of true all-hands-on-deck preparation for one team. Obviously, that's incredibly minor because you have such a big staff that you can spread the, st- the staff between all the possible opponents and, and get it done that way. And in the in the NBA, there's only 30 teams. You've scouted for every single team. You've seen every single team. Uh, so you kind of have, have a baseline of what you want to do. But it's a very minor inconvenience. The true downside for the one seed is the likelihood of facing the Lakers. Because while I think the Thunder can beat anyone, the Lakers present by far and away the worst matchup for Oklahoma City of any potential playoff team. And I just believe the Lakers will stick in that 9-10 game, meaning that the only pathway for LeBron and AD to make the postseason is to take on the one seed. And in this case of being Oklahoma City, that's by far a bad matchup for OKC. On the flip side, the case for the three seed, I think besides Dallas, you you have a really compelling case that the six seed is, is a much better matchup for OKC. Uh, because, you know, you have an entire week of prep in that scenario. Because it's, it's only, you know, you know your opponent at the end of the Sunday games. And to be a three that would mean that you've gotten rest for SGA and J-Dub down the stretch. Because I think if they play, we've seen this whole year, they're going to win a lot of games. So if they win a lot of games, they'll be higher than a three seed. But if they are a three seed, it'll be likely at the cost of of not playing Shea and J-Dub a ton down the stretch of this season. But the, the benefit there is none of this matters without those two guys being healthy. And I see a lot of overreaction about them not playing. If this was a playoff game today, I think that both would play. Just, you have to believe that. The benefit here, though, is don't be so short-sighted of, yes, the playoffs technically start in six games. You've put yourself in a position and a body of work that suggests that you are going to contend and that you want to play basketball for Quite some time. So if you go through two rounds, you are playing basketball at the end of May. The NBA Finals happen at the end of June, right before, you know, June like 20th, the 30th will be the NBA Finals. So, uh, the, of course, you're not planning to just play in a couple of weeks and be done. You've got to make sure these guys can have the longevity of, of a marathon you know, level of, of a series. And a marathon of you're going to change your rotation. And I think that the sheer number of players that you play, it might still get up to 10 for Mark because that's just how he operates. But the volume of minutes that Shea and Jada plays will go higher. It'll take you higher than you've seen. And, you know, the Thunder fans will welcome that with arms wide open. But it'll it'll take you higher to a number uh, that Shea and Jada have to be prepared to play. And technically speaking, the Thunder did let Shea play Sunday. And uh, the the company line, so to say, and it's true, they're not going to put Shea out there or any other player out there if they don't feel like they can play to their normal accordance of like no restrictions on them and, and no anything. Uh, so the line from Mark where he said that pregame was true, That is that does not mean that Shea was fully healthy Sunday. It was evident by how he played that he was not. Uh, fully healthy on Sunday. And the version of Shea that played Sunday where he lacks that that second gear, he lacks the change of pace, he lacks that first step to get to the rim, 
that version of Shea Sunday would send the Thunder home early. Because none of this matters. The, the fear of any matchup with the Lakers, uh, the, the, the longing for any matchup with whoever you think is the best matchup, and anything in between, none of that matters unless you have your two stars and your go-to guys who can go score. We've seen how tough life is to create offensively without those two guys there in these last couple of games. So to be the three seed, they would get the necessary rest, I think, to, to uh, be the best that they can be. And that's the most important part. And especially if Denver wrestles away the one seed, then that flips them away from OKC. We're not going to play them until the Western Conference Finals. Then you know, you're really sitting pretty with seed number three. So I, I think, by and large, the biggest argument has to be getting Shea and J-Dub as close to 100% as you possibly can get. Then you have the two seed, which I think is pretty interesting, pretty tough uh, for the two seed. You find out your play and matchup uh, a little bit faster than the one seed, but later than the three seed. Uh, they do have one more game of wear and tear on them uh, than they typically you know, otherwise would, but they also have a boosted confidence from winning that game. And it's, you know, you're still not in control of if you flip the bracket. So you kind of get all the bad traits of three and not many good traits of three because you're not in control of making sure uh, Denver uh, would be on the other side of the bracket. But ultimately, seeding, matchups, none of it matters because I think that when healthy, this Thunder team can compete and beat anybody. Anybody in the NBA, the Thunder can compete and beat in a seven-game series with a fully equipped roster. They have to get that, though. They have to take the necessary steps to ensure that those guys can get to that level. And I think that they're doing that, and I think that that's a smart decision. Where do you want the Thunder to fall? What matchups are you looking forward to the most for this Thunder team? Or what matchups are you the most scared of for this Thunder team? Drop it down below in the comments on YouTube, or let me know on Twitter, at Ryland underscore Styles. Coming up, we're going to answer your mailbag questions. But first, let's say right now, but our good friends over at Robinhood, check out Robinhood right now. Robinhood is awesome. Because did you know that even if you have a 401k for retirement, you can still have an IRA. Robinhood is the only IRA that helps you give you a 3% boost on every dollar you contribute when you subscribe to Robinhood Gold. Get this, now through April 30th, Robinhood is even boosting every single dollar that you transfer in from other retirement accounts with a 3% match. That's right, no cap on that 3% match. Robinhood Gold gets you the most for your retirement thanks to their IRA with a 3% match. This offer is good through April 30th. Get started right now on Robinhood.com slash boost. Subscription fees apply and now for some legal info. Claims as of Q1 2024 valid uh, by Radius Global Market Research. Investing involves risk, including loss. Limitations apply to IRAs and 401ks. 3% match requires Robinhood Gold for one year from the date of the first 3% match. Must keep Robinhood IRA for five years. The 3% matching on transfers is subject to specific terms and conditions. Robinhood IRA available for U.S. customers in good standing. Robinhood Financial LLC member SIPC is a registered broker dealer. We're back on the Lockdown Thunder Podcast on the Lockdown Podcast Network, your teams every day. Thank you so much for making us your first listen every single morning, every single day. We're here for you talking Thunder basketball. Let's get to your mailbag questions like this question from Maury. Uh, should the Thunder draft a big in order to solve their rebounding issues or do the Thunder look at the market in, uh, I'm sorry, Mario, uh, and do the Thunder look at the, look at the market uh, for a solution there? So I, I think if you're in this camp of like the Thunder need this rebounding big man, which will be a, an, an exhausting topic of conversation this entire summer, but I cannot wait for it because this is a very fun job. But uh, if you're in that camp, I think that that's just one of the easiest things to acquire, right? It's one of the easier things to, to get. And it's certainly less expensive than the cost of a lottery pick because a lottery pick is not just a pick. Like it's not just like, Oh, you know, you can go 
and make this selection in this 2024 draft where, you know, everyone kind of thinks it's a bad draft and in, it, it, to an extent it is a bad draft. Um, but you can also use it as a tool, as a, a form of currency to get a deal done down the line you know, and, and get a trade done and, and use it to just your benefit in that way of uh, the trade market, especially. So it's not as though uh, they can't take that pick and either use it to acquire a better, more polished big that's not necessarily drafting one or whatever other team needs that they feel that they have. You can also use that to trade back, which I think will be an interesting option. And it's going to be annoying to hear the national media give the lazy takes of how many picks do the Thunder need? They just keep acquiring picks. When are they ever going to start using them? Even though the roster is built on and predicated on a lot of draft picks already. Uh, but nonetheless, silliness aside from the national media, in a draft that's this, you know, quote unquote, shallow or weak, teams are going to fall in love with their guys even more because if you don't like a guy in this draft, there's, there's probably a good reason for it. And you, and you probably feel validated in thinking that. And so you're going to want the guy who you've pigeonholed for your roster, who you've talked yourself into during this process, even more than a normal draft. And so if you take this draft pick and you move back, right, you might get an extra, you know, a couple additional sweeteners and the drop off and the disparity in talent, especially for this team who, uh, you know, would of course love to add a talented piece in the draft. Absolutely. You always are looking for the best option. Uh, it's still going to be tough to find huge rotational minutes for a rookie unless they're just really good. Uh, you, you can take the calculated risk of sliding back a few slots, picking up an additional pick, and then making a selection there, uh, even if it takes you, you know, out of the lottery. So like the, the lottery pick can be used in more than just, hey, here's the draft card uh, to Adam Silver. And I think that this version of a big man who people are clamoring for, that's like a beefy traditional five, those guys are really a, a dime a dozen. And let's say you add that kind of guy to the roster, how often are they going to get runway? Right? I, I see people uh, pigeonholing like Zach Eady to the Thunder. Zach Eady's not going to be good. I have reservations if he's going to be good, period, in the NBA. He's not going to be good for the Thunder. Like this is an immobile guy who can't run in transition, who can't play make, who can't space the floor, uh, and, and really who, who just can clog the lane. And we're not even sure uh, if the whistle is going to transit to the NBA either. How does that fit what the Thunder have built and what the Thunder do? So if you even place Zach Eady on this roster, how much runway does he really get in Oklahoma City with their style of play? On paper, you know, this is a seven foot big man uh, who feels a need uh, of rebounding. But in practice, it's just not going to gel and vibe with what's made the Thunder successful. And if you're going to just get Zach Eady for the sake of Zach Eady, who I believe is closer to Boban than actually a quality NBA player, um, that's just not going to be a lane that the Thunder are going to find success in this draft at, 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 the, at the lottery. And that's not what the Thunder have done um, historically. They've not just punted on a pick to, to draft for uh, fit versus, uh, you know, draft for need versus fit versus uh, upside. And I think that as much as people are not going to want to hear it throughout the process, I'll have to just beat the drum the whole time. The Thunder are not out of the game of cards. Like, look at this roster. The Thunder have gotten unbelievable injury luck this year. Just unreal injury luck. But Shea misses five of the last six. And Jada has missed games sprinkled in here and there and everywhere. And this offense just cannot create sp space in the Milky Way. Like, you don't have a creator. You don't have a table setter who can go do that. Now, do I think that Casey Wallace can develop into that? Absolutely, I do. I do believe in him, uh, but you get a guy like Jared McCain who can play on the ball, who can play off the ball, who can shoot the three, uh, who can, who can uh, you know, set things up offensively for you. Like that's a very good option, even though he plays that taboo position of guard and oh my God, the Thunder drops another guard. Oh my God. Right. Like that's should not be an immediate freak out point because even with unbelievable injury luck, the Thunder have, have, have struggled uh, without their two table setters. Now, granted, with that caveat of every team will struggle 
without their one and their number two. But the Thunder are uniquely positioned where, had you gotten a little bit more creation on Tuesday, you beat the Sixers with Embiid without your two top guys. Because the Thunder have enough quality play finishing uh, rotational players and 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 pieces around, uh, you know, quality creators, that if you give them another creator to ensure like break glass in case of emergency type, then you can really carry water as long as you have some semblance of your team. Of course, you can't have six, seven injuries. But again, that Tuesday game goes much differently. Tonight's game feels much differently if you have a guy like Jared McCain you know, to, to help steady things uh, with Chet, with, with Giddy, uh, with, of course, Wiggins and Wallace and Dort and, and everyone else. Like, And it makes those guys better too because look at Lou Dort. We've seen what Lou Dort looks like when he's able to not be the one who has to take shots and force up shots and be aggressive. When he has to do that, just like last year, it looks bad. And the year before, it looks bad. When he doesn't have to do that, it looks like this, where he's an incredibly efficient player this year uh, for his role and a really good defender. Uh, So getting another creator actually helps them, I think, more than a traditional big. Because it goes back to what we said on, on Tuesday. The way the Thunder are able to play and speed up these big men, swarming them, forcing turnovers, and crowding them, is just as, if not more, successful than telling some big man to go guard Embiid and Jokic one-on-one. There is no such thing as a player who can guard those guys one-on-one. And guess what? If you think that that Chet will struggle to guard Sabonis or struggle to guard Valanciunas or struggle to guard, guard Nurkic, go look at what's already happened during his rookie season before he's made any sort of offseason leap. He's played them off the floor. You cannot guard Chet with Valanciunas, with Nurkic, with any of these other guys who are in that B tier. You just can't do it. And especially if Josh Giddey can punish you for putting a center on him, as he has for the last month. You cannot survive that way. And nobody can survive defending and beating Jokic one-on-one. So either way you slice it, the big man category is just, I think, a vastly overblown need in the sense of in the sense of the people who just react to if it's not a big man, this is a bad mock draft for the Thunder. Or if the Thunder don't go get a huge, you know, addition on the big man market, uh, it's just not successful for this offseason. We'll see what the playoffs look like, but I really do believe in this style of play. And it sounds crazy right now. It sounds untraditional right now. We are not that far removed from the warrior style of play being laughed out of the room. And then look what happened. So everything's crazy until it works. Everything's crazy until, uh, you know, something good comes of it. Coming up, we will talk about your your man about questions regarding the Thunder uh, all-star selections next year. And Usman Jang, and more on tonight's game, all coming up. But first, I want to say right now, but our good friends over at Amazon Fire TV. Check them out today at Amazon Fire TV. Fire TV is your destination for sports, live games, highlights, and in depth analysis. Fire TV offers amazing viewing experiences with smart TVs, as well as Fire TV sticks that you can plug into your existing TV uh, for uh, access to millions of movies, TV episodes, as well as free uh, and live TV. Whether it's opening weekend of Major League Baseball or college basketball's tournament, you're going to want to have a Fire TV. Fire TV uh, realizes that recently they've delivered you a constant supply of the latest videos of your favorite sports brands all for free. That includes us at Locked On. So with most big pro sports and conference uh, college conferences as well, Fire TV channels let you dive deeper into the game analysis, highlights, and more to keep up to date on the latest in the sports world from March Madness, NBA, MLB, and lots more. Not to mention the great news, entertainment, gaming, travel, cooking videos as well. Check out Fire TV channels on the Fire TV and Alexa devices. If you have not checked out Fire TV channels, you should. Trust me on this one by visiting Amazon.com slash locked on fire TV. That's Amazon.com slash locked on fire TV. Also, want to say right now about our good friends over at Nissan. Check out Nissan because they're great if you're looking for your next adventure to push things a little bit further. 
If you've ever wondered what that adventure could be around the corner, our friends at Nissan have a lineup of SUVs with the capabilities to take your adventure to the next level, like the 2024 Nissan Rogue. It's perfect for city drivers and the great escape class uh, exclusive Google built-in assistance to help you make calls and everything else you need on the go with their 12.3 inch HD touch screen. The 2024 Rogue is the perfect mid-size crossover for your next adventure. Check out the Nissan Pathfinder as well. It has room for up to eight with their expansive cargo capacity and advanced available at four by four capacity with 284 horsepower and up to 6,000 pounds telling with when adventure calls, the Pathfinder is there to answer the call. You can even check out the 2024 Nissan Armanda. Uh, whenever you go there, it is the full size SUV Nissan Armanda uh, there for you. You can picture this rugged four by four that can seat up to eight in the first class luxury style, uh, tow bigger and explore further. The 2024 Nissan uh, Armada. Uh, check it out. It's Nissan Rogue, Nissan Pathfinder, Nissan Armanda. Just go there right now uh, for your next great adventure by shopping at NissanUSA.com. That's NissanUSA.com. We're back on the Lockdown Thunder Podcast on the Lockdown Podcast Network, your teams every day. Thank you so much for making us your first listen every single morning, every single day. We're here for you talking Thunder basketball. Iris says, how many All-Stars will the Thunder have next year? Two. Uh, I, I think that you have to be out of this world good to have three uh, record-wise, which the Thunder can absolutely accomplish. Uh, but to be safe, let's go with two. You would have to pencil in right now Shea and J-Dub. Well, you can Sharpie in Shea, uh, but penciling in J-Dub over chat, Sharpie and Shea, one of the two others uh, make the All-Star team next year, I believe, in San Francisco. I do think that that will come to flourishing for the Thunder. If they're like a buying away one seat at the, the around the voting, of course, ending, then yeah, they could have three. Because for that to happen in, in this tough Western Conference, which is only going to get tougher, folks, like barring any sort of just unbelievable injury, like again, what happened in Memphis this year too, like the really Memphis, like Memphis is going to be back in this mix and not just in the play in mix. Like Memphis, uh, would it surprise you if they rack up? 50 plus regular season wins next year after only having 26 this year. Not at all. It would not at all surprise you if that was the case. So someone of the regulars in, in this play in have to drop out. Uh, I think that Houston's made it, made it pretty clear that like they are not going to uh, try to be out of the plane again next year. In a sense of like, they push for it this year. They're going to keep trying to improve that roster. So like that's two teams who I think are going to want into this party. You could easily see golden state falling out, but short of that, like who else would you project to fall out again without any major injury? So that leads to a wire to wire chaotic uh, frenzy in the Western conference, which I don't think will have much separation at the top, especially by the time that all-star voting takes place to where I don't know if anyone will have racked up uh, enough wins to get three all-stars, despite how good uh, Chet is and Jada is and Shay is as well. So you can Sharpie and Shay and then pick your favorite uh, of Jada and Chet uh, positionally, uh, you can make an argument that it might be easier um, for Chet, maybe, uh, but we'll see. McLevin says, will Usman Jang be in uniform for the Thunder the remainder of the NBA season? What's his status for the playoffs? So the Blue are still in the G League playoffs, and he will he will continue with the Blue for the postseason, uh, you have to imagine. They do play tonight, just as the Thunder do. Uh, they play in Sioux Falls against the Sky Force tonight. Us hit the game winner against the Rio Grande Valley Vipers on Tuesday. I got to talk to him after the game for a one-on-one -on -one interview that you can find at InsideTheThunder.com. Uh, just Google Inside the Thunder uh, and Usman Jang, you'll find it there as well. Uh, he was a lot of, it was a very honest conversation about his year two development, and he made some big plays in that game that really highlighted how he's developed his game uh, this season where he goes up and gets this incredible rebound uh, defensively, leads to a loose ball foul, hits a free throw to tie the game, uh, and then comes down and gets the game-winning layup as well, a physical initiating contact finish at the rim to seal the win at the bu you know not not buzzer. There's no timer in the Elam ending, but still the game winner uh, for for Usman Jang at the end of of the postseason. It obviously felt good for him to realize um, the you know fruits of his labor of those of those talking points of him needing to play with more force and be more physical. He accomplished that throughout the entire season. And boom, it happened for him in the G League playoffs in the biggest moment. 
Now, in terms of like his NBA eligibility, once the blue season's over, he will be with the Thunder. He is eligible to play in any playoff game that the Thunder have. Of course, uh, you know, you have to get it down to 15 active guys and the Thunder are fully healthy right now. So that'll be a little bit challenging. Like some, some guys have to be an inactive, uh, healthy scratch. But uh, in terms of eligibility, he can play in any game that they want him to. He's an actual member of the roster. The only players on the Thunder 18-man roster um, who are not eligible for the for the playoffs uh, is there are Adam Flagler, Olivier Saar, and Keanthe Johnson. It's the two-way uh, cast of characters uh, that will be ineligible for the playoffs. And so, of course, they'll be the ones in street clothes. And technically, yeah, Usman Jane could play in the NBA postseason. How likely is it? Uh, I would not I would not bet on that happening, but he technically could uh, play within the bounds of the rules. I am very excited with what's to come for Lockdown Thunder, our first playoff run as a show. I'm very excited for that. Number one, Friday afternoon, Derek Parker of InsideTheThunder.com and DraftDigest.com is joining the show to talk Thunder, to talk draft, and to have a lot of fun on Friday afternoon to set the table for you heading into that Pacers game. Saturday, we're going to recap that Pacers game. Monday, recap the Hornets game. Tuesday, a very special guest will be on the show. Wednesday, Kings recap. Thursday, Spurs recap. Friday, stock watch heading into the playoffs. What is your level of trust on every single member of the Thunder entering the playoffs? That'll be a lot of fun. Saturday, Bucks recap. Sunday, Mavericks recap. Because on Monday, we have to start our playoff preview extravaganza. You're going to get guests locally. You're going to get guests from the national standpoint. You're going to get guests from the whoever the matchup ends up being with our crossover on Locked On. That'll be a lot of fun to put together as well. Round tables and everything else uh, on that Monday and that entire week leading into game number one. But it does not end there because as soon as the final buzzer sounds, on that Mavericks game on Sunday to conclude the regular season, we start our playoff dash. Monday through Sunday, the entire postseason of the Thunder are alive for, and two pods on game days. So we're going to have our normal shows that come out at, you know, as close to midnight as possible, uh, Monday through Sunday. And in addition to those shows, around lunchtime, you're going to get keys to the game for that night, if it's a, if it's a game day night. Keys to the game for that night. A little quick little hitter, 10 minutes of just honing in on the most prevalent points of that game and getting really into the weeds game by game. And of course, your typical normal shows as well. It's going to be a lot of fun. Subscribe anywhere you get your podcast from, including on YouTube, so you never miss an episode. And until later on, be good and be good to one another.